For all the parents out there, picture that it's bedtime. You and the kids have been busy all day. You know they're tired, but for some reason, they just won't go to sleep. And for this reason, I created the podcast Bedtime History. Bedtime History is a series of relaxing history stories that end with an inspirational message. With over 2,000 positive parent reviews, Bedtime History is one of the top education podcasts. Join me and listen to Bedtime History every Monday and Thursday on iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hello, friends. Welcome back to Kid Short Stories. If we haven't met yet, my name is Mr. Jim, and my wife and I, we we live in South Carolina with our kids and parents. This has been the absolute life-changing thing for us to reduce screen time. Honestly, like listening to audio stories and podcasts for kids, that has been instrumental in our family and just been a part of our every day, whether getting ready for bed or in the car. These stories are saving our lives. <laughs> Are you guys ready for part two? Me too. Let's go. As Addie and June were setting up their frequency detector, they had to plug it in and point all these antennas in different directions. And then there was this one thing that you hold in your hand and you hold it up in the air and it starts beeping when it detects a certain frequency. All right, Addie, I'm going to hold this up, and can you push the button on the car remote, and we can test the frequency to see what it is. June held up the frequency wand, and Addie pushed the button on the remote. Beep, 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 beep. They checked the screen on the frequency detector, and it had all kinds of information. It showed the frequency number, which was 54, and it said it was a short range frequency which you know meant it couldn't control your car from like miles away it was designed to only work when you're like nice and close to your car all right that was a really good test said june now we confirm that this frequency detector is working and now let's try and see if we can find some frequencies that might be interfering with all the cars addy turned a whole bunch of dials on the frequency detector and opened it up so that they could detect long range frequencies that might be coming from a really far away place. And immediately it started alarming. Beep, 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 beep. Holy smokes, look at this, said Addie. They were pointing at the screen that said that there was some giant frequency that was a long range one. Long range means it can go for miles and miles and miles. And it seems to be the same code that their car's remote is. Every remote on those car things are coded. They're they're secret coded for every individual car. So one remote can't unlock another car. But this is what we call a skeleton frequency. (gasps) This, This is totally a skeleton frequency, said June. Addie couldn't believe it. Have you ever heard of something like a skeleton key? Yeah, skeleton key is like a magical key that can unlock any door, which that would be a pretty cool key to own, but they're so rare and I've never seen one. But to have a skeleton frequency, that means that you can unlock any frequency that exists. (gasps) This is bad. Addie and June looked at each other and they knew how serious this was. We've got to call this into HQ. Eddie grabbed the walkie-talkie. Shh, HQ. This is Addie and June again. We found something. Over. Shh. Addie and June, it's great to hear from you again. What, uh, what have you discovered so far? Shh. Well, we used our frequency detector, and we just uncovered that there's some kind of frequency just constantly in the air. And it's a skeleton frequency. Over. Shh. A skeleton frequency? Oh, dear. That's that's not good. That's definitely coming from Dr. Stinky Breath. We're going to need to locate where the source of that skeleton frequency is coming from. We're going to need you to figure out a way to turn it off. And let us know what you find. Over. Shh. Addie and June race back to their closets and <laughs> grab their jetpacks. All right, June, grab the frequency detector and let's get going. Addie and June zoomed out their door. It was a lot easier to locate where a frequency was coming from if you were from a higher position. 
And so they were flying really high, almost up to the clouds. When June turned on the frequency detector, she held out the wand and she was turning in a circle. This would help the frequency detector know where the, like what direction the frequency was coming from. Beep, beep, beep. They were listening and waiting for the sound to get louder because when it gets louder, that's the direction that they have to go. Beep, beep. Beep, 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 beep. All right, looks like we're going south, said Addie. June and Addie started flying south. Even though they didn't have a GPS or a map of showing them where the location was that they needed to go, they had their frequency detector, which was basically like a GPS. It was telling them exactly where that frequency was located. All right, I think we're getting closer, said Addie. Let's turn off the detector. It's really loud. As they were flying south, they were they were approaching a really large hill. It was very tall. Like they were flying almost at the clouds and it was like they were about to fly right smack into the hill. <laughs> but it's a good thing that they landed safely. All right. I think we're getting closer, said June. My guess is at the top of this hill, there's some kind of, you know, big radio tower that's sending out this frequency that's controlling all the cars let's go Addie and june were crawling their way through bushes and and sticks and leaves and it was pretty intense of a hill that they were crawling through but they had to stay low so they would be undetected all right guys it looks like uh, the signal is working perfectly Now we just need to link up to all of our other satellites, and then it will cover the whole world. It'll be perfect. June, did you hear that? Whispered Addie. Yeah, and look at that up there. Addie and June finally discovered it. At the top of the hill, they were right. There was a giant radio tower that I think was controlling the frequency, but it was now being connected up to a giant satellite dish. And my guess is that satellite dish is going to broadcast the signal across the whole wide world. Addie and June grabbed some binoculars and they were looking around to see where like some wires or if anything was coming off of the giant tower that they could turn off or control or anything. And then June is the one that spotted it. Addie, look over there. You see there's that big thick cable coming down from the tower. It's like it plugs into... There's a computer right there. Look, June was pointing not only just 15 feet in front of them was a computer. And it seemed that computer was hosting the frequency that was being broadcast everywhere. All right, we need to find a way to steal that computer, said Addie. That's probably the only way that we're going to be able to stop it before it goes across the whole world. Addie pulled out their net blaster and lined it up. All right, let me see if I can grab it with this net. Three, two, one. The net blaster shot out a giant net that went flying through the air and captured the computer. And they were able to pull it back and unplug all the cables. Let's get out of here, said June. They threw it in their backpack and off they blasted. Hey guys, uh, did anyone uh, move the computer? Seems to not be where it's supposed to be. What do you mean, guys? I just saw the computer was right th- Oh, you're right. It's gone. Uh, do we have any backup computers that has the same frequency? I only put the frequency on that one computer. Yeah, I thought you were gonna put it on a backup computer. Um, well, uh, I got hungry and ate some candy instead. Are you kidding me? Woohoo! Great job, Addie and June. You guys saved the day. And as soon as they turned off that frequency, all the car alarms immediately turned off and the world was saved. And finally, they could go back to sleep. <laughs> wow, great job, June and Addie. You deserve a nice, calm, and peaceful night's sleep. The end. Great job, you listened all the way to the end, and you know what time it is, it's time for Kid 
Shout outs. I want to say hey to Eliza and River from Missouri, Salem from Oregon, Camilla from Canada, Shua from Australia, Josepha from Bangladesh, Elsie from London, UK, Ada and Tova from New Zealand, and Pipster Preps Rabbit Class from Portland, Oregon. I'm so glad that you're all on the Kid Short Stories family and on our spy team. We could not stop Dr. Stinky Breath and his crew without you, my friends. Well, you have a super. Super duper day, and I will see you on our next adventure. Bye! For all the parents out there, picture that it's bedtime. You and the kids have been busy all day. You know they're tired, but for some reason, they just won't go to sleep. And for this reason, I created the podcast Bedtime History. Bedtime History is a series of relaxing history stories that end with an inspirational message. With over 2,000 positive parent reviews, Bedtime History is one of the top education podcasts. Join me and listen to Bedtime History every Monday and Thursday on iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.